Hello friends, welcome to Electronics Clubs Insights Conversation. Today we have with us Mr. Krishna Rao, who is the chairman of Sulakshana Circuit Limited. Mr. Krishna holds nearly three decades of experience in the industry and has an MBA from the University of Western Ontario, Richard Ivey School of Business, and it is a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering from McGill University. Today, we will discuss with Krishna about the PCB industry, technological developments, disruptive methods, high layer count, and much more. So welcome to the Insights Conversation with Electronics Club, Mr. Krishna. Thank you, Anamika. Nice to be here. Thank you. So uh, Mr. Krishna, let us start with understanding about the latest trends in the PCB industry and how are the technological developments impacting the industry? Well, I mean, the, the latest uh, trends are to uh, make boards smaller and carry more information. So if you can think of your mobile phone, it's um, denser, uh, more functionality, which is delivered by uh, finer lines on a printed circuit boards, uh, thinner, uh, more multi-layered, more layers in the printed circuit boards smaller holes, et cetera. So those would be the trends uh, in addition to a lower weight in, in some applications. Okay. Um, so if you could highlight about the manufacturing techniques and problem in the PCB industry, and how is this going to impact the entire industry in 2022? Well, uh, manufacturing techniques, uh, you know, uh, we make an electronic product, uh, but the manufacturing techniques are uh, mechanical and uh, chemical uh, primarily. So we drill holes, uh, we etch copper, we plate copper, uh, we transfer images. Uh, you know, those are our basic processes. We have 28 uh, processes uh, in our uh, facility. So it, it's considerably more complex than uh, an EMS facility would be. Uh, it's, I think, one of the biggest untold stories of, uh, of electronics and how complex uh, making a printed circuit board is. Not as complex as making a chip, but uh, definitely more complex than many of the other uh, uh, processes in, in, in putting together an electronic uh, component. So, um, you know, the problems are as, uh, you know, one of the problems is the interface between designers and uh, the PCB manufacturer. Um, typically the uh, electronic designer uses uh, a CAD software to design it, uh, has uh, too little understanding of the uh, processes and uh, the best way forward is for the designer to communicate, you know, iterate a couple of times with the uh, manufacturer to understand some of the uh, complexities and uh, uh, modify the design or accommodate the, those parameters into the design. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, could you highlight about the manufacturing, um, uh, say we just discussed about the manufacturing techniques, but you also told about some of the problems in the industry. So could you just, uh, highlight or mention some of the solutions to those kind of problems? No, that's a good question, uh, Anamika. Uh, you know, uh, I think a more sophisticated uh, CAM software, uh, better uh, protocols for transferring data from the CAD system, you know, IPC, you know, we've been struggling as an industry to get off Gerber, which is, I don't know, maybe a 40 year old uh, communication method. Uh, it's, it's like people using telegraph, you know, uh, when there's high bandwidth solutions available. So I, I think at the upfront stage, uh, better uh, uh, data transfer using the new IPC standard uh, would, be, uh, would be a way. Um, you, 
you know, there's new manufacturing technologies. There's uh, uh, direct imaging technologies that we're using in uh, three areas of these uh, of the process. Uh, we transfer images. You know, I mentioned. You know, we transfer images at the uh, for the copper layer. We we transfer an image at the uh, solder mask layer, the green layer that everyone's uh, familiar with and uh, the LP layer, the legend printing or ident stage. And uh, all three have uh, direct imaging solutions now, which, you know, like a laser printer, uh, increases the accuracy and reduces the cost and reduces the cycle time considerably. The machines are terribly expensive, you know, on the order of uh, $500,000, uh, uh, you know, three and a half cores type uh, thing but uh, definitely have uh, incredible capabilities, which will allow designers to uh, make even finer lines and uh, have more functionality in the designs. Okay. So uh, Krishna, if you can discuss about the new manufacturing technologies, which is allowing us to make much more complex board, like you were talking about the complex PCB manufacturing uh, entire process. So much more complex boards than it had been possible till now. Yeah, so I, I, I mentioned, uh, you know, direct imaging uh, machines that are very expensive. And, and they basically, rather than uh, make, making us make, and, and we already have flying probe testers, right? So uh, these basically uh, allowed us to move from a, uh, a tooling process, a process where we had to make tools before we could do the process to uh, allowing us to make uh, one-offs, right? We can make one, we can test one board efficiently. We don't have to make a tool to test that board and therefore uh, force people to buy many boards at the same time. Uh, it's also much quicker. Uh, so flying probe to, from dedicated testing, which what we have, we still have two ATG machines, you know, German machines. You have to make a nine plate fixture. You have to drill each plate, separate drill program, nine plates. And then you have to assemble a fixture to test one board, you know, terribly inefficient for one board, very efficient for thousands of boards, but the whole world is moving to smaller lots and finer lines. So uh, a flying probe tester uh, just allows us to put a digital program in and then test one board right away. So these are the kind of new technologies we've already already implemented uh, with our microcraft, that Japanese machine, uh, this, this flying probe test. And uh, our intent is to move to direct imaging, which again allows us to avoid tooling and directly manufacture the uh, boards. Okay. I hope that answers your question, Mika. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Sure. So, uh, Krishna, if you could talk about the high um, high layer count uh, PCB technology, which is coming for the five G era. So, what are the possibilities that this technology can unleash for the entire networking and communication in our division? Well, high layer count. I, I think, especially with the five G and uh, new technologies, you know, be it IOT uh, or, or, or smaller uh, electronic uh, devices, uh, allows uh, a designer to save space, right? It allows them to uh, make uh, boards smaller, right? We, we put in, you know, right now we do uh, eight to 10 layers at, at the upper limits and, uh, our new factory will do up to 40 layers. So you can see that big jump in the layer count necessitated by uh, 5G, uh, higher functionality, desire for higher functionality, lower latency in the circuits uh, and, and so on. Uh, so you know, that, that's the sort of thing that uh, high layer count is driven by and, and necessitates. Okay. So um, we all know that designing uh, um, a very good PCB that has no complex uh, processes involved, that uh, requires a lot of forethought. 
and uh, especially to make sure that what you're designing will be manufacturable that can also provide a better yield which requires extra design efforts now do you think that this could uh, this design process could take off the test and inspection pressure and how is the pcb industry actually dealing with this kind of a design method yeah it, it definitely uh collaboration between the design team and our cam engineers uh takes the pressure off uh test and inspection right it it it, it improves yields and uh, would improve the pricing that we can give the customer. Uh, it, it improves the delivery times because things don't have to be manufactured again. So no doubt, uh, better collaboration between uh, the designer and our uh, CAM operators, our CAM engineers is, uh, is highly desirable. It can be done two ways, right? It can be done by uh, the CAD engineers learning about our processes, understanding our technology capabilities, understanding our roadmap, understanding some of the trade-offs, you know? Uh, it could be better to do something one way. It'd be better to have three mill lines. It'd be better to have, uh, uh, you know, uh, ground areas uh, controlled uh, not having isolated traces in the middle of, uh, of ground areas, uh, which affects the plating thickness that we can put on. Uh, so the designer can either know this and avoid that, or they can uh, collaborate closely with our CAM engineer so that they understand the, uh, you know, we can highlight issues, potential issues, and they can modify the design if, uh, if possible. If not possible, uh, we can still make it, but everyone has to understand that the yields will be poorer, the delivery times will be slower, and, and so on, right, as it becomes a special case. Mm -hmm. So 2022 is just approaching. So what are some of the things which is going to drive the PCB industry? What could be some of the biggest challenges the industry is going to face? And how are they going to mitigate those challenges? Well, uh, you know, the, the, the standard, we've been in business for 35 years at Selectina, the standard uh, trends are uh, faster, uh, finer lines, right? Smaller lines, uh, cheaper. Uh, those, are, those trends will continue. There's no uh, uh, doubt about that. I, I, I think... Uh, the 2022 will see some of these new technologies. Certainly in our factory, uh, we'll have these direct imaging uh, technologies that will uh, improve yields, improve the capabilities uh, down to two mil lines, two mil traces, uh, which is like uh, 0.050 mm uh, lines and spaces, uh, laser drilling, uh, which will allow blind and buried vias. Uh, these are the kind of trends that will be more and more prevalent as designers try to uh, pack more functionality into, uh, into a PCB. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what about the challenges? Well, uh, the challenges are, uh, all, you know, clearly in the manufacturing, uh, some of these manufacturing uh, Techniques are more art than uh, science. Uh, they take skilled operators uh, able to understand uh, uh, how to, uh, you know, uh, thread the needle, shall we say, you know, like uh, I get the yields while maintaining the uh, specifications that the designers asked for. Uh, I talked about collaboration between the uh, CAD engineer and the CAM engineer. Uh, those are the kind of uh, challenges I think that, uh, that need to be faced. Uh, buying the equipment, it's terribly expensive. You know, our new factory costs 160 crores. Those are huge investments uh, needed to, uh, to, to uh, acquire these new technologies, new factory, new imported equipment, all imported equipment, you know, uh, very few suppliers around the world. So uh, 
it's definitely a capital intensive, uh, uh, you know, problem that has to be overcome. Very true, very true. Is there going to be any kind of a collaboration to handle this challenge when it comes to the cost uh, side of PCB manufacturing? Say collaboration in terms of with any industry or experts or, or two companies coming together, there, can this be a solution? Uh, definitely, I, I alluded to, uh, you know, the CAD engineer, right? So from the designer who's uh, putting together the circuit, uh, they can actually uh, come and visit us, understand our processes, uh, you know, that kind of collaboration, or they can send their designs over to our uh, CAM engineer and have a conversation with him or her about, you know, where the problem areas might be, uh, discuss alternate possibilities to reduce costs and improve yields and improve cycle times. Uh, so that's an area of collaboration. Uh, I mentioned IPC, which is a US uh, uh, printed circuit association has a new standard. Uh, it's not a new standard, it's an old standard, but uh, has a standard that hopefully will replace uh, Gerber data. You know, I, I think it's just lethargy that keeps us from moving to better standards that allow better, richer communication between uh, all players in the ecosystem. So uh, that's another collaboration, you know, agreeing on a new modern standard between the design team and us, and then providing the data in that format. Um, what other collaborations? Us and the material suppliers, you know, uh, these uh, materials, uh, you know, uh, uh, push the limits, uh, the, the, the desire of the uh, designer uh, is to make the smallest possible circuit and that pushes the limits of uh, the material. So, you know, uh, in the old days, just having the right amount of copper was sufficient. Right now, people want uh, so much that the grain structure in the copper has to be specified. Uh, you know, DK, uh, etch controlled, you know, uh, impedance checking. Uh, th th these are all the sort of uh, tools that uh, we use to uh, to meet the designer's uh, needs. Mm -hmm. So what kind of a growth opportunity uh, lies ahead for the PCB industry? And uh, we know with growth, we need more skilled manpower. So do you see any kind of a shortage in the uh, manpower skill? That is there any kind of a gap that needs to be filled in and how can that be done? So you talked about a skills gap and what was the first uh, part of the question, uh, Anamika? Yeah, um, it was about the growth. What kind of a growth is the PCB oh, industry? The growth, period? right, the growth, uh, thank you. The, the growth is uh, good worldwide, right? The industry has been growing, I think five or 6% uh, per year on average for, uh, I don't know, you know, our, uh, for 50 years, let's say, since the 1960s uh 60 years 70 years uh, but uh, in india especially the growth is you know 30 percent in some of these high technology areas like uh high layer account multi-layer uh flex circuits that uh we're in we're going to be making in our new factory flex rigid have growth rates above 30 percent you know for for the indian market so huge growth potential you talked about the skills gap. I think that was the second part of your question. Yes. Uh, and uh, definitely, you know, uh, it's a challenge getting good people. Uh, people who've got experience in manufacturing, uh, people who have in, uh, experience with some of these new certifications, uh, and uh, people who are interested in manufacturing, right? Aren't, uh, who are willing to work with equipment, work on the shop floor quite often, you know, when it comes to uh, uh, this sophisticated new equipment, you know, many of these pieces of equipment are in air conditioned, uh, clean rooms, you know, class 10,000 clean rooms. So it's not like you're, you're on the shop floor, but you're not, uh, and you know, our new factory is gonna be the most modern in India, right? It's gonna be world-class. So these are not harsh environments. 
that uh, people would be working in. But, uh, you know, in the last 30 years, we've seen uh, many talented engineers from our company, and I'm sure others, uh, switch over to uh, IT, move to the US and so on. We've lost dozens of people. So definitely skills in hardware, getting them, keeping them is, is, is a challenge. Thank you. Is there anything what uh, the industry and the academia could do to bridge the skill gap? Uh, well, I don't know if we can, but we, we certainly try, right? We do the best we can. So uh, both the central government and uh, the Telangana state government have uh, skills development programs. I think they're more designed for uh, operators, but uh, they've been more than forthcoming in offering to do the best they can in training operators. Uh, so, uh, you know, I think that's one good source. Uh, there's certainly a recognition uh, that uh, support is needed uh, for this. Uh, and then uh, uh, I, I think, you know, we're forced to hire uh, green uh, recruits and uh, train them often at great expense uh, in these new technologies uh, and techniques. Uh, but uh, yeah, that, that's the best we can do. It's, uh, you know, India is a growing country. So it's not like there's, uh, you know, as I say, we're going to be having the most modern uh, printed circuit board company in India. So obviously the skills that go with that have to be developed as we did 30 years ago when we set up uh, our existing facility. We had to bring quite a few fresh new people and then train them at great expense to, uh, to make PCBs. Mm -hmm. So, um, Mr. Krishna, thank you. Thank you so much for your time and such deep and in, insightful conversation today with us. Oh, you're welcome, Anamika. Good luck. Thank you. And uh, friends, do subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Thank you so much.